Legacy TV Dublin presents Conversation with Susanna on Afro Carib Lifestyles and Achievers. Hello, everyone. You're welcome again onto Conversation with Susanna on Legacy TV Dublin. Uh, it's, been, it's been a while. I hope you're going to enjoy my conversation today. I have a very special guest in the house that I'll be having a good chat with. Um, I won't tell you much about him, I'll let him introduce himself. But we're going to be talking about mental health and this is something that is close to my heart this is something i always like to share about because i know there's a lot of sensitivities around when it comes to mental health i hope you're going to enjoy my conversation welcome dr obi is it obi now obi yeah. Obi yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry for that uh it's good to have you here thank you yeah <coughs> and we, we should have had this conversation for quite a long time um uh, but it's a great opportunity to have you sit down with me and have this chat. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you very much for having me here in this uh, fantastic uh, studio. Thank you very and, uh, much. And congratulations for the, the job. job you're doing <laughs> here. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Prosper Obioha. Um, I was formerly a local consultant psychiatrist here with um, HSC in Ireland, in Ireland yeah. and um, until 2016 when I left for the UK. I am currently doing a specialist program in addiction okay. and that would um, make me a consultant in psychiatrists and in addiction services. Okay, which is good. That's <laughs> having two combinations, oh, yeah. two different yes. things. Yeah. Uh, together. Yeah. Now, tell us about you know you've been in Ireland. You've worked within the um, with the HSE yeah. and you've worked within the mental health uh, services here in Ireland. Uh, give us a little bit insight into uh, to that to the services that we have here for mental health. Hmm. Right. Um, I, I, well, in comparison to where I work at the moment, I would say that um, when you come to Europe, the Irish um, healthcare system would be one of the best. Um, I know it hasn't really come up to that, you know, what you have in the UK, but mm. from the time I spent here, you know, I started um, working here from 2005 and left in 2006, so I would have worked uh, for about 10 years. 10 years, yeah, health yeah, roughly. Services in yeah. Yeah, I think they have really done done well in terms of improvement in the health um, services and in the area of the mental health service where I work. I think um, they've really improved, you know, in terms yeah. of um, um, in terms of seeing the patients, in terms of um, provision of adequate treatment and management. Um, I know in the mental health services, apart from it being a consultant led service that you know is you need to have other you know other people who work work alongside the team, yeah, the team know, yeah. um, we work in a model that we call the um, multi disciplinary team you know yeah. where you have the consultant psychiatrist mm -hmm. you have the nurses you have the psychologists you have the social um, workers. workers and you have the yeah. professional therapists yeah. and other and other supporting teams people that support the support. teams and yes, I think they've done well in terms of having all these things in place. In place. You know. Although some um, some service users will also complain about the yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, it's, in accessible. Yeah, yeah, it's good services. that you brought that in. Yes. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. It's good that you brought that in. Mm -hmm. I, I know that you, in your own position, mm -hmm. you have a very, you might have a very different perspective of uh, the service itself. Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. I'm going to be talking in, in perspective of as a parent in this conversation hmm. so and not just as a parent itself but as uh, as a person within the community and my observation with regards to it uh, so i might have a different perspective of the services how you access the services hmm. and i think that is the area so yes those services are there but accessing the services that's what i have a problem with um how to access it how to get people assessed and the process of getting uh, a child to be assessed, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to an adult. You know, if, if you observe something as a parent or uh, as a parent, for example, you observe a child and you feel that the child might need help with regard to their mental health. Um, and then you need people to come in and assess them. It's, so, it's just very difficult to get uh, the GP to do the assessment, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to an area whereby 
the person in that position doesn't recognize the fact that they have that issue. If you're speaking for them, uh, it becomes more difficult. But if they recognize it, uh, if they recognize it, if they have certain services directly themselves, it's a different scenario totally. But if they don't recognize it, and you have to be a voice for them, it's so difficult to be able to take them through that journey. Yeah. Uh, the process is really, really good. Being an advocate for parents is as get, trying to get their view across. So if you're a mom or your dad or you have a child that is experiencing mental health issue and you want to approach it, tell us a little bit, how do we do that? Uh, what are the first steps you think we should do? Uh, apart from the GP, let's start from the from us as parents. You know, you were talking now about with the people we can talk to. So do you want to start just from there? Well, I think, I think apart from the GP, the other place to like seek help would be in schools as well. You know, schools would have um, psychologists in schools yeah. and I've seen them, I've, I've, I've known of instances where children were seen by the psychologists in school. In school. Support you know, them. Some would yeah. call them counsellors in yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. And the counsellors will now, if they, if they think or if they are very concerned about that child, mm -hmm. they would advise the parents to either get in touch with the GP yeah. or they could also write a letter to the like I mean in the child and listening service yeah. there, are, there are times of we've gotten a letter yeah. from the counsellors in school yeah. you know, yeah. expressing their concerns so, and regarding the about, child. about yeah. the child yeah. Yeah. and from there we'll, we'll uh, send mm -hmm. out an appointment, appointment and see what they can do yes. and I know that <laughs> basically we focus very much on medications and mm. uh, I, I believe there's a lot of alternative way of dealing with Oh yeah, child, like, so like I said, I mean, there are other things, medication yeah. would be the last result, you know. Yeah. And I think within yeah. our community, if mm. we could make it a community whereby people realize yeah. they can talk about it. Oh yeah. Because that doesn't happen frequently. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, when mm. you talk about it, there's, it's really... There's, there's a uh, program that they do about, uh, when a child comes with a behavioral problem. Mm -hmm. They call it a positive parental training. Okay. There, the parents would have classes where they talk about their I've never had experiences. A yeah. You know, isn't, yeah. It's, 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 um, it's, um, it's, I mean, they use it a lot in the U.S. Okay. and in Canada as well. And they, but I don't think they have it in Canada. They, they, they do, do. Okay. They do. It's called uh, where the parents come and talk about the challenges. That they have the in. Um, what helped. Yeah. What didn't help. Mm. And how forward. they relate with the child at so, home. So that yeah. helps as well. Because that, you know, I was talking to you when we started this conversation that uh, in my group we're setting up this support team for mm. parents. So if anybody out there wants mm. to get any yeah. support, mm. you can contact the Heart Centre. We have, you can go onto our website as well. And you, if you watch this on Legacy TV, you can contact me as well. And then we can support you uh, if you have any issue regarding that. One of the things I would like us to have is to talk about is our mentality um, coming from we are from the same background mm -hmm. from the same continent and we're calling yeah. it of Africa and luckily from us we are, for us we are from Nigeria yeah. now mm -hmm. the perspective of the way we see mental health um, before I came anyway to Europe uh, mental health is totally something that um, to, to, totally is something unspoken of and even when it's spoken of it uh, you only see people on the streets. You don't realize that there's some that mental health takes a long way before it gets there until you see somebody on the streets. And the form of treatment that they have back in Nigeria is totally quite different. Um, there's some of some of those treatments are things you really don't even want to talk about. Um, and I, I don't blame them. I think it's all about orientation and things like that. Um, it has its own good side and bad side. But let's talk about the stigmas that are in, in our own community we have around mental health. Uh, let's talk about that. Well, what is your own view about it? What advice will you give to people that might have the opportunity today to see you talking? Uh, and they are from our own community. How do you advise them? When it comes to mental health. Okay. When you say the community, is it the community here or back? Community here in Ireland. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is where yeah. we are now. These are uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, I mean, we live in Europe, yeah. and the good thing about here is that um, they have the professional of information. You know, the uh, the awareness has yeah. been created. I know there's this um, awareness on mental health. Yeah, you know, yeah, there's a lot do, of uh, awareness do, around. There's a whole lot, you know, they do programs that is meant to enlighten people about their mental, mental health yeah. and how to seek help. Mm. I know the GPs would be the first 
point of contact, point of yeah. contact for yeah. most of us. Mm. That's why it, I mean we have them all over the place. Mm. And um, um, if I start with um, child and adolescent mm. mental health, you know, which I know is the area where you they know, have. It, I find it so hard to believe children have mental. They do. Just, they just do. I think that is unreal. Well, I've been seeing, know, I've been reading yeah. about it. Yeah, um, and I, I wonder, like, what is wrong with these mm. people? Where do they see that? Yeah. Well, I worked in that area where you have um, children that you know, would present with uh, ADHD. ADHD is an attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Yeah. You know, some would come in with um, with low. Is that classified as mental health issue? Well, it's a behavioral problem. Well, it's a behavioral problem. problem, problem rather than, than, but they, yeah. they they could also coexist with um, mental health. You know, with there's a bit of mental health. Yeah. So sort of anxiety disorder. Anxiety disorder. Depression. Okay. Yeah, yeah. OCD. Yeah. OCD is um, obsessional um, obsessive compulsive disorder. Okay. You know, which is a mental health. So yeah. that is classified yeah. as a mental health. Yeah. It is. Okay. It is. Yeah. Mm. So if I start with that. I think the difficulties also would come from the parents as well because um, if they see a child presenting with some bizarre mm -hmm. behavior, you know, a child being so aggressive, so agitated, mm -hmm. very anxious, you know, uh, that's cause for parents to be worried and then try to mm -hmm. seek help from yeah. the GP. Would advise them to do that. Some of them done that as well, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, and then um, once that's done, GPs would uh, refer the patient to the child and adolescent mental mm. health services. Mm. At times, they are placed on waiting lists, mm. you know, which at times it could be up to a month, yeah. it could be up to six weeks, eight weeks before mm. they get to the scene, you know. But when they are seen and picked up, they have adequate yeah. in place, mm. you know, in terms of, you know, it could be a form of using medication yeah if the yeah. child suffers from let's say attention deficit yeah. disorder, yeah. you know which is a very um disabling illness yeah you know it's easy for us as parents <coughs> if you have a child between the age of adolescent to accept that they have a form of e mm. either intellectual physical or any form of disability mm. rather than to accept that they have mental health yeah yeah i know it's a hard thing yeah. one reason is being uh there's a lot of stigma, stigma, a lot of stigma and um, in, in Africa where we come from, all those the taboo things and all those things. So, but yeah, because of I talked about the education, the orientation, the orientation you know, parents have come to yeah. accept that, you know, because um, it's not only accepting that they have a mental illness, mm -hmm. but again, it goes along to help the parents as well. Because, I mean, if, if, to deal with it. if one has a mm -hmm. child with all with this um, behavioral problem or mm -hmm. mental health problem. It places a whole lot of burden on parents. On parents, yeah, well. on yeah. parents. So it, it's the idea is for the healthcare mm -hmm. official or professionals to come in and help. You know, mm -hmm. help you and assist you where you need help. Yeah. Because, um, yeah. yeah. So um, and again, being parents wouldn't want their yeah. very young ones to be to be in that position. Dedicated, yeah, know, to be dedicated. Start, start, start oh, at a yeah. very young at a very age, young age yeah. to take it. But yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry to say, and that is one of the problems I know with mental health, uh, that yeah. the moment you're placed on medication is just for life. Not really. It, does, it, does, it, it doesn't really because I've known children because if I, if I take an example of uh, ADHD, mm. they tend to outgrow it. You okay. know. The essence of them being on Education mm. is because if they are in school, yeah. If if a child is in school, nobody wants to see that about that, a child in that the classroom. That child will yeah. need to concentrate, yeah, yeah. to yeah. learn, to learn, so to study. That's that's part of why we medicate them. Medicate them. Mm. But medication is usually used as a last option. Oh, okay. There are other behavioral management management that can be in place for that. That are mm. used, you know, in terms of and other things, you know, the 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 services would also involve the involve the expertise of yeah. various other uh, uh, areas mm. areas like they could call the occupational therapist mm. to come and do a what they call a functional assessment of that child and mm. see mm. where they could come in and help the child and in terms support of the life. child as well yeah. we have the social uh, the um, speech and language, language therapies, therapies yeah. that will come and, and even the in schools they have yeah, specific uh, yeah. type of uh, things for exactly. them that support yeah. them yeah. along the line they yeah. do that in school mm. 
and they have the psychologist as well yeah. who would come and work with the child and mm -hmm. see yeah, other yeah, areas yeah. We, we need to emphasize. Mm -hmm. And they are special needs assistants. Assistants that support the them. Schools. That's so, a, yeah. yeah, it's a whole lot. Yeah, it's so, a lot of yeah, yes, a lot of support. Yeah, and yeah. Yeah. I think I think the area where they are lacking a bit is uh, um, the area of. Um, Educating the parents. Educating the parents. It, it and I think that is the most important. Yes, it, uh, for, for all parents, <laughs> yes. it's not specific to us as uh, mm. migrants mm. or as Africans. Uh, mm. When it comes to that, I think right. it's a universal it thing is. that it needs is. to be. Yes. Well, for yeah. us, it's not different uh, mm. because it's something we don't want to talk about. It's something we don't want to accept. It's something that yes. we don't um, mm. We don't really accept that mm. it, it, it's really happening, or we associate it with mm. either there's somebody mm. within our own family mm. doing yes. this or doing that. Yeah. Uh, but I've come to discover, yes, that um, mental health itself could be hereditary. Well, it, we Do you want to get no, normally, in normally in this, mm. uh, it's because I have uh, in cases where we see patients when they come to hospital. Part of the question that they are going to ask you is, you know, how did I end up having this? Or the mm -hmm. families would ask you. Um, if there's anybody within your family what, line of family what that causes yeah, this, like yeah. if we take um, schizophrenia, yeah, you know, yeah, it's, it's, seems um, to be more hereditary. Schizophrenia is a major mental illness. Yeah, you know, where the patient comes in and um, you have what we call the positive symptoms mm -hmm. and the negative symptoms. Mm -hmm. The positive symptoms would be in terms of. Hearing, hearing voices, voices and things like that, that which yeah. we call uh, auditory hallucinations. Mm -hmm. you know, some would come in with um, paranoid, paranoid, persecutory delusions. Feeling the family you know, that people are after them. them yeah, after them. yeah. Some will come with very tough disorder. Yes. You know. And, and then and some, some yeah. really changes their being totally. It, it does. It, it does. changes their paradigm. Yeah. From an that's, adult person, they act yes. like a child. And that's why they say they are yeah. out of their mind yeah. and those things. So normally, what we say is that we don't know what causes this illness. Mm. We don't know yeah. what causes the illness. Yeah, a lot of people but that, yeah. Yeah. there are certain things that increases the chances of someone having it. Mm. Like someone that comes up with a schizophrenia. Yeah. And again, one in every hundred person will really end have up it. having it. Yeah. But we don't and that know is one yet. of the orientation people really need to yeah. know. Yeah. So we say that things like stress mm. could trigger it. Trigger it. If one has it in the family it increases the chances of someone of having, it as well. having it yeah. Yes. The thing that happens there is that there are chemical imbalances in the brain, in the brain mm -hmm. you know, but there are things that then trigger it and increases the chances of one having it. As mm -hmm. I mentioned, if someone has suffered it in the family, yeah. stress, stress can bring it. Change of environment. Use of illicit yeah. drugs, you know, yeah. people who to their drugs. experiment yeah. on mm -hmm. cannabis, mm -hmm. you know, stimulants yeah. like amphetamines and all yeah. those things. Good. Across that, yeah. yeah, and again, um, um, if you also major life events, you know, mm. if there is loss of very close oh, member of the family, separation within the family, separation, parents, parents death, yeah. child death, mm. all those things, you know, there are things that mm. put people into a lot of pressure yeah. and it could, you know, yeah, yeah. Anyway, before we go, um, <laughs> in case you're watching us, I'm talking to Dr. Prosper, I've been having this conversation with her, and we're talking around mental. So if you come across this video and you watch it, it this is Dr. Prosper sharing uh, with us um, and just enlightening us more a little bit about what mental health is. So if you're a parent there, out there, if you're within our own community, because like we said on Legacy TV, our focus is on supporting Africans and promoting African and projecting and providing a platform for us as Africans to be able to share our views. So if you have an opportunity to watch this video and you come across this conversation, and you're out there, you have a child. Don't see this as a stigma. Let's start talking about it. Let's create a conversation around mental health. Because the more we talk about it, the more we have a solution to it. So I'm going to get Dr. Prosper. Dr. Prosper, I'm going to get you to talk to people right at home today. Just give them advice, you know, give them a short advice how we should react to it and uh, how people should take away that stigma. And uh, the first point of response, like you said, greet your GP and talk to your GP. Anything. Well, I think we can't um, take away that shock that comes in when a child is diagnosed with something or even an adult is yeah. diagnosed with an illness. But again, it's just to, you know, try to deal with that shock at yeah. the initial stage and that uh, calls for help. Yeah. And the help would be in terms of uh, assessing the appropriate services. As I said, the 
GPs will be the first point, point of contact. Yeah. Again, if you share it with a friend, it's very it's important. Very good, yeah. It's very problem, a problem how to share this yeah. answer. Yeah. You know. And again, uh, the other thing would be to try to leave out that stigma thing. You know. Away and just see it as like there's the other normal form of sickness. This thing, that is what it is. This thing yeah. happen. And mm -hmm. um, there are help out there. Out there. Mm -hmm. Out there. I mean, if you, if, if um, if a family, if I mean, if um, if parents get help in yeah. terms of um, managing their children yeah. with, um, with illness, I mean, yeah. that will go a long way in helping them as well and um, and um, sort of um, lessen the burden yeah. that, they, yeah. that they have. Yeah. Now, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having this conversation thank with you. me. I really enjoy it. It seems to look as if it is really, really <laughs> creates a very serious atmosphere. Uh, but it's good chatting with you and I'm hoping to uh, we could do this some other time and talk a little bit more about it so for everyone that is watching this uh, thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed it if you have any reasons to want to know more about what we have shared here you can uh, like us on Facebook Legacy TV Dublin you can google us and then you see our YouTube channel to watch you can check us on Instagram and at the same time we have a Twitter page if not you can just send me a message on legacy tv uh dublin on facebook and we can answer any of your questions that you might want to know more about so thanks for watching it's suzy peace legacy tv dublin it's conversation with susanna on afro-carib lifestyles and achievers